This episode is made possible by Badlands Pets. As you all know, Mojo, my precious baby, is the reason why I found love in the first place. He made me feel love again. So I would do anything to ensure his health and longevity. And actress Katherine Heigl, and I have that in common, she's helped save over 16,000 dogs through her foundation. And after doing a ton of research, she feels there's one place we can look to to improve any dog's health, and that's their food. So fortunately, she found that just by adding a few special superfoods to her dog's food, she saw huge transformations in their health. So she's made a 20-minute video explaining step-by-step how anyone can do the same thing to see incredible changes in their dog's health. I've definitely re-looked at what I'm feeding Mojo and making sure that he only has one life to live and I want to make sure it's the best damn life. So if you want to keep your dog healthy and happy, go to badlandsfood.com slash datable and watch Catherine's video right now. Again, that's B-A-D-L-A-N-D-S-F-O-O-D.com slash D-A-T-E-A-B-L-E. I was so excited to get my shipment from Last Bottle Wines in the mail the other day full of incredible red wines all from Napa Valley. I love wine tasting, so having this to my door couldn't be happier. Also couldn't be more excited that today's episode is brought to you by Last bottle wines. If you don't know already, they're a Napa-based online wine shop with a twist. They offer just one hand-picked wine per day until it sells out. And they're always at incredible prices. We're talking 30 to 70% off retail. And the best part is that there's no subscriptions, no fees, and no minimum purchase. And I could not be more excited to bring this offer right now because they're having a marathon sale, which is coming up March 28th and 29th. Even better, we're offering Datable listeners 10% off your first order with code Datable. So if you are a wine lover like me, this is a great time to join. And did I mention that shipping is 100% free? So what are you waiting for? Mark your calendar for March 28th and 29th or get on it earlier if you want. You can sign up at lastbottlewines.com and use code Datable and find out why Last Bottle is the most fun way to discover and buy amazing wine. The Dateable Podcast is an insider's look into modern dating that the Huffington Post calls one of the top 10 podcasts about love and sex. On each episode, we'll talk to real daters about everything from sex parties to sex droughts, date fails to diaper fetishes, and first moves to first loves. I'm your host, Yue Xu, former dating coach turned dating sociologist. you also hear from my co-host and producer, Julie Kraftchik, as we explore this crazy dateable world. Hi, friends. Welcome to Brunch Talk by The Dateable Podcast. This is our chance to answer your burning dating questions, and we can get a little deeper in each question because we know you have all of those questions coming in, and we want to give you a little bit more time and attention. Yes, we do, because the burning dating questions never end, and UA and I had the pleasure of seeing each other this week in person, which was always fun, and we were with some of our other girlfriends, and, you know, I feel like they gave us inspiration probably for another year for brunch talk questions in themselves. <laughs> there were so many good questions and so many different topics that we went into that, you know, it always makes it more fun in real life when you're really dishing this out. So for anyone that's at home doing brunch, definitely love that you're doing brunch with us virtually, but also, you know, go out with your girlfriends, go out with your guy friends. There should be a bros brunch. There's nothing wrong with that. Whoever you're with, you should find someone to go out and dish and person and, you know, share this episode with them while you're at it. Just clarifying, we were with girlfriends and a new boyfriend, a new guy friend. That's true. That is true. <laughs> who was so much fun. He's a gay friend of our other girlfriend. And the night started out pretty tame. We're just like having normal conversation. And then we end up at this, I don't know, a chicken place, a Vietnamese chicken place that one of our girlfriends was like obsessed with. And the guy that owns this chicken place, place is this very charismatic older Asian man. Older Asian man. Okay. That's the, the that's like, I want to emphasize that word. And I don't know what was in the chicken, but it made the whole group a little horny, I think. And they were both so into the zaddy, oh as they God. were calling him. Every time he would come over and bring in like a new, you know, our food or silverware, these two could not stop gawking at this 
poor man who was just trying to close up his restaurant and go home to his family. But no, he's got all these eyeballs on him. Like they're drooling over him and the chicken. They couldn't (laughs) stop talking about him. I've just never seen someone, you know, really gawk at someone like this before. I unfortunately had left by this point. So I missed (laughs) the gawking. And I love that you're like something in the chicken. Or maybe since we were out at four o'clock and this was probably around like nine o'clock, that could have also done it. Just a thought. I love that we were out at four and most of us were home by 10. That's how you party in your 40s. <laughs> you know, the next day in the group text, everyone's like, we should do this more often. And I'm all for it. I'm all for the early start, early to bed. It's great. It's great. It was packed. Too. There were a lot of people on the same page as us. Yeah, there were a lot of 40-year-olds out. So, yeah. you know, Julie, something for you to look forward to. <laughs> When you reach this decade? <laughs> I did go to a music festival. It was a free festival of yes. Hardly Strictly Bluegrass. And I'm not a big bluegrass fan, but everyone there, the average age, I would probably say was like, I don't know, I want to say like 70. And oh. <laughs> I thought you were going to say 40. I shouldn't say the average age. There were a lot of older people there. And there was this tweet that like kind of started spiraling that was like, this is the only music festival that you can go to and feel young at. And I'm like, damn right. Because I'm normally in like the old person's tent at these, you know. <laughs> I was wondering who goes to Harley Strictly Bluegrass. Yep. I It just sounds kind of more mature, right? You just I mean, the there was alone. this couple that were like hardcore grinding. They were definitely in their 70s. And I was like, Damn. You go. You grind. You grind. You know? I want to I wanna grind for the rest of my life. Air hump. Whatever. <laughs> just like I want to do all the things that I used to do in my 20s well into my 70s. So good for them major goals, but we will bring this conversation back to the question for this episode. Kind of brings it back, right? (laughs) Kind of, yes. Speaking of grinding. Speaking of grinding. Grinding was a good segue. (laughs) The question is, when is it appropriate to send sexy photos? Yes. And more context. I've been dating this guy for a month and received a text with a sexy photo in it. The only problem was I didn't find it very sexy. Is this enough to end the relationship? There's something very violating about getting a picture that you did not ask for. So even if the photo was sexy, I think I would have still been taken aback. I really question, really question things. But I think the better question to ask is, have you communicated to this person that you were a little taken aback by receiving this photo and asked for their intentions? I think it's good to have an open conversation. It could get really tricky if someone sends you a photo and then you break up with them and not explain or talk about it. That would just break my ego. I would go home and cry (laughs) and maybe delete all the photos on my phone. (laughs) Can you imagine? if you're like, ooh, I'm looking good today. I'm going to send this to the person I'm dating. They're going to love it. And then they call you back and ask to have the conversation. You're like, ugh, that's not a good feeling. So I would say still give them a chance to kind of talk through their thought process. You're still learning about each other. And I bet you anything, some people send sexy photos because they're used to doing that with an ex. You know, Mm -hmm. their ex maybe asked for it and they're kind of projecting onto you and this current relationship. So it's just good to get these things out of the way and openly talk about them. The problem with sexy photos is they can't be sexy or they can be really cringe. Yeah. And sometimes we're not always the best gauge of ourselves and what we're putting out there. I've definitely seen some along the years that the person was really trying. They were really trying to be <laughs> sexy. And I'm sure I've also said things that I'm like, this seems like it's sexy to me but questionable, you know? I don't want to gender, but I think men and women maybe have different thresholds for what the sexy photo is too. I would say like, is it grounds to end a relationship? It's hard. It's like if you have that ick factor and you've really got into a place that you're not attracted, it can be hard to come back from it. But I would say like, can you weigh like, 
everything. Like, is this enough of a one-time thing to send you over the edge with it? And if it is, like, I think nothing is worse than trying to force it. Like, if you're really feeling like you are not attracted anymore, it is a hard conversation to say, like, hey, your photo was so unattractive that I am unattracted to you now. I don't really know how you say that in a nice way. So I think there is a communication element to it, but, like, how much you communicate, I'm not 100% sure. I think it could be, like, <laughs> I'm not ready necessarily. Like, I think the timing of the photo is an easier conversation to have, right? It's like, Mm -hmm. hey, like, we're not there yet. Or like, this is a lot for me. That's an easier conversation than saying like, hey, your photo you sent me that you thought was really freaking sexy was repulsive and gave me the ick factor. <laughs> like, that's a hard combo to have. Well, circling this back to the top line question of when is it appropriate to send a sexy photo? And I think it goes back to, again, you need consent first. Yeah. You really need consent. And on the receiving end, you need to communicate that consent is needed. I've received two dick pics in my lifetime. One was on Instagram by a stranger. And the second time was through a dateable listener through our email. That was a uh, fascinating. I was going to say you forgot <laughs> one, but that was the second one. Amazing. That was it. <laughs> two people I did not know. And it was very shocking to get these photos because I did not invite them in. And sure, if I knew them or maybe like was dating them, I could have thought these were hot, sexy photos, but I certainly did not ask for them. So they were already not sexy in my book. So asking for for that consent, like there's something kind of cute and sexy about, hey, I'm going to send you a photo, you know, been thinking yeah. about you, you ready for this? And the other person could be like, no, I'm at work. I'm right. screen sharing right now. Right. So do not send any photos Or it's someone could be in bed thinking about you and, and saying, yeah, send them over and I'll send some over. We just need consent. You got to just communicate no matter you're on the sending or the receiving end, you got to communicate the consent. I am 100% on board with that. <laughs> I think context is so important too. Yes. And you don't know where the other person is when they're receiving things. Like I think understanding the environment they're in is so important. And that can just be a couple conversation starters leading up to it, right? Like I feel like you shouldn't just be like sending this hot without any icebreakers into it. Like this shouldn't be the first text message that's going through when you have no context of where this person is. Yes. And especially early in a relationship, Relationship, like you just don't know them enough. Like I've gotten like, you know, some photos that I haven't like thought were unsexy. Like they definitely were like attractive. And I think it was because, you know, we were apart for another reason or there was a lot building up to it. And, you know, there was reason for doing it. I admit I'm not someone that like loves sexy photos. Like that's not like my go-to in any way whatsoever. So I'm sure there's people out there that are just like, this is a must for a relationship. I don't think I'm I'm that person and I'll think you're that person. Either you a as you've only gotten two in your life Mm-mm. and neither of them were <laughs> from a partner. <laughs> Mm-hmm. But I think like, you know, there there have been a time and a place like when you're doing long distance or you're apart for an extended period that it can be a nice thing to get. But again, there is conversation leading into it. Yes. I personally think like having like a conversation of do you like getting these types of photos is yes. really important too. And yes. it doesn't need to be like a long drawn out convo. But like if you're on early dates, like you could just bring this up. You can even use this podcast as a start again off point like hey I was listening to this podcast talking about sexy photos like what's your take then you at least know like if they're like oh yeah that's so hot then you're like okay game time like this could be something again you know set the context to lead in but at least you know it's something that they're receptive to but if they're just like clam up and it's clear they're uncomfortable then like maybe that isn't a good move for you Mm -mm. it's risky yeah it is maybe one of the riskiest things you could do in your life other than going into oncoming traffic. Because if you think about it, the times that I've seen sexy photos from my friend's exes, those exes did not, they were not sending photos for me, but I got to see them because you never know where your photos are going to end up, especially if your relationship ends. So if we're talking about sending photos, I think it's also important to communicate the risk factors involved and saying, I trust you to keep these safe in a Mm -hmm. password protected album, or they disappear and I watch you delete them because 
listen, this shit could come back around and really haunt you later when you're running for office or I don't know, you become famous and someone wants to blackmail you. That happens to all the fucking celebrities. Even if you're not famous, like (laughs) anything, right? Like they could totally come around and bite you. I would never want that stuff like leaking in any way. But I think also if you are going to do it, don't put your face in it. (laughs) That's another hot take. That's a good (laughs) tip. Yes. Be anonymous with it. Yeah. And just don't show too much. Just, you know, leave a little bit to the imagination. When I was in long distance, that's like the time I did this the most, for sure. Yeah. And I would say it's probably pretty PG in the scheme of people's sexy photos. (laughs) But for me, this was like the most I ever did. And I think, you know, like something subtle, like I definitely like had something that was I actually ended up reusing it as my bumble photo later on like I cropped it (laughs) slightly but it clearly wasn't like that bad is what I'm trying to say it's like you know it was very minimal it was like leaving a lot to the imagination and if you simply cropped it you wouldn't even see anything so I think like how can you do things in a tasteful way knowing that it could circulate if you are going to put your face in it and if you're looking to have it circulate then you have another agenda right (laughs) some people are like I want to see the shit up on the internet I want to be known for this then you do you. I think that's good for you. So think about your intentions when you're sending and receiving. I think it's funny. My friend told me this story. She just started dating this guy and now they're married. So it's different. But when they first started dating, she went on his phone because he was like, can you look for this photo of, I don't know, this car that he was trying to buy? And he couldn't get to his phone. So he's like, can you look through my photos? And she came upon this photo album that had all these sexy photos of his ex. And she was so pissed. She's like, why didn't you delete these? Why do you still have these on your phone? He, and I do believe him because I met him and I think he's a stand-up guy. He's like, I completely forgot these were on my phone. They're just like so far down the list because she's go scrolling through all the photos just trying to find the car. And also he's so trusting of her. Like if he knew these photos were on his phone, why would he tell her to just scroll through right. his phone, right? So I believed him. But even in a circumstance like that, when you're well-intentioned, It could still be misinterpreted. And they had a huge blowout fight. They almost broke up over this, understandably. But just know, like, these photos have consequences. I do want to go into some of the nuance. But before that, let's take a quick break. This episode is brought to you by the One Love Foundation. The numbers of people affected by relationship abuse are startling. Abusive relationships rarely start with physical abuse. Instead, there are often red flags like manipulation, isolation, belittling, and volatility. Do you know the signs? One Love Foundation, a national nonprofit dedicated to ending relationship abuse, empowers you to see the signs of an unhealthy relationship before things go too far. Visit joinonelove.org and learn to spot the signs of unhealthy and healthy relationship behaviors. This episode is sponsored by Via. We all know there are things that can help set the mood in the bedroom, but did you know a little THC could also do that? Yes, Via has developed a unique blend of pleasure-enhancing cannabinoids, libido-strengthening herbs, and a low dose of THC all into one mind-blowing gummy called High Love. This gummy, wow, it will awaken your senses, increase blood flow, and intensify any sexual experience. I've been pleasantly surprised by the High Love gummies because it is just the right amount of THC for me to have a good time without feeling sleepy. And hey, if THC is not your thing, Via also offers a wide array of other gummies without it. And everything legally ships in 50 states with discreet packaging directly to your door. So if you're over 21, you can get 15% off and a free pack of award-winning Dreams THC plus CBN sleep gummies with our exclusive code DATEABLE at ViaHemp.com. That's V-I-I-A-H-E-M-P.com. Let the gummies work their magic. Head to to viahemp.com and use a code DATEABLE to receive 15% off and one free sample of their sleepy dream gummies. That's viahemp.com and use a code D-A-T-E-A-B-L-E at checkout. Take your passion and pleasure to a whole new level with high love from Via Hemp. This episode is made possible by Armoire. Armoire makes getting dressed easy. 
with a clothing rental membership from Armoire, build the perfect wardrobe with brands that are high quality, unique, and recommended just for you. All you have to do is take a five-minute style quiz and select items from your dynamic, personalized closet. The styles show up at your door in as little as two days. Then when you're ready for new clothes, just swap them out. Listen, I live in Southern California. There is absolutely no need for puffer coats or any sort of those winter jackets. But when I travel anywhere else in the world in these cold months, I'm often burdened with the task of getting winter clothes. And now with Armoire, I can just rent my winter wardrobe. It's brilliant. Right now, our listeners can give Armoire a try and get up to 50% off their first month. That's up to $125 off. Just visit armoire.style slash datable. That is armoire.style spelled A-R-M-O-I-R-E dot style slash D-A-T-E-A-B-L-E to get up to 50% off your first month and never worry about what to wear again. Try Armoire today. As you know, I recently left my corporate job and I've been in total recovery mode all about self-care. One of my new routines is the nighttime shower before bed. There's just something about washing away the day and that reflection that's been super helpful for me. I've been using one of our partners, Osea's Mega Moisture Duo. This combo body oil and body lotion are so freaking incredible. It literally feels like I'm at a spa. I realized that the secret is seaweed and other skin level ingredients that are normally reserved for face products. And that's why I was so excited when Osea became one of our partners. And, you know, we're so grateful for partners like this because one, they keep the show going, but they're also super good for all of our listeners and for our own well-being. So if you want to have that nighttime bliss like I am doing, you can get 10% off your first order site-wide with code DATABLE at oseamalibu.com. You'll get free samples with every order and free shipping on orders over for $60. So head to oseamalibu.com and use the code DATABLE for 10% off. Let us know which products you end up going with. Share them in social. Super excited to see what you end up choosing. So there's definitely nuance of different people receiving this. I think sexuality is a play. I think your actual like gender identity is a factor. How long you've been seeing this person is a factor. Maybe like, let's start with like, how long you've been seeing this person, because I think that mm. really does make a difference. Personally, like I think the first month that was kind of what the listener wrote in about, mm -hmm. or also probably another factor, have you been sexually active with this person? person or not like right. you know i think if you haven't then like it's That's probably awkward. <laughs> definitely don't send the sexy photo because i mean i've definitely gotten them before from people on bubble and tinder that you know I hadn't even met yet. And they're like sending that shit yeah. through. Like that is, I don't know. I feel like there's not That's many awesome. people out there that really want that. Maybe at least as a hetero woman, I don't want to speak for everyone, but most hetero women don't want that. There might be like one out of a hundred that do, but if you are a hetero guy trying to date hetero women and you're trying to date someone that wants a long-term relationship, no, it's, yeah. it's a gamble and probably not going to go in your favor. So there's that. <laughs> if you're looking for just a hookup, at least you're sending your intention so people can decide yeah. from there what they want. I'm curious what you think about this, but I almost feel like even hetero women that sent like a real sexy shot at the beginning before they met up to a man, a hetero man would be kind of put in this category of like hookup only. Like you said, depends on the pretenses and what your sexual relationship has been. Do you trust each other? Mm -hmm. Because I can certainly tell you the times my guy friends have shown me photos I did not ask for, for the girls there. <laughs> We're seeing were in the very beginning of dating yeah. and then saying, check out what this chick sent me. It's exactly. so inappropriate. And I don't condone that type of behavior, but that's what happens. These guys kind of use it as a way to show off. That's why I think the length of time is so important. I think, first of all, like the month, you don't really know this person very well at this stage. Mm -mm. So they don't really like, oh, I hate the word like, owe it to you. But I think people do view it like that. You're like not someone that's like a deep part of their life at this point point. Mm -hmm. And also even like the listener that wrote in, you're at like a very deciding phase. Like you're evaluating, is this person I want to spend more time with? Any little thing at this stage, it's a very fragile state, can become yeah. like unattractive and then it's hard to come back from it. So I would say like if you can refrain at that beginning stage, plus you don't probably know their opinion on the matter as well. Like I think the beginning stage, like I hate using like hard fast rules, but probably like at least three months 
months in, I would say, is like the appropriate time if you are trying to have a relationship with this person and you don't want this thing circulating around. Well, it's similar to our conversation about when to go public with your relationship. It's like there's no arbitrary date. It's about did you get your partner's buy-in yes. first? Yes. <laughs> and end of the day, all of this is a conversation with your partner to get their buy-in. It should be very openly talked about. This is all bringing back so many memories. I remember I hooked up with this guy in Vegas once. He had just gotten a divorce and we had a great night. We hooked up. It was great. And as I was getting dressed, he tried to take a picture of me. <gasps> this is when there were no camera phones. Oh my God. It was like camera. It was a legit camera. That's horrible. And he he wasn't trying to hide it. He was just like taking a photo of me as I was getting dressed. And I was like, what the fuck are you doing? And he's like, I just want to remember this night because it's been so special. Like not of me half dressed. This is not how you treat a woman. But how fucking clueless was this guy trying to take a picture? And so I had to really educate him on how uncool that was and disrespectful. But again, it's a conversation. He kind of just assumed I'd be okay, but obviously I was not okay with it. And we just make so many assumptions when it comes to other people's likeness and their identity that we don't protect other people. We just need to be more cognizant of that. Yeah. And I think, you know, again, like I hate gendering as a whole, but I do think women are more like we're not as visual of human beings to begin with. I think the anatomy in itself, there's a lot of reasons, but also, you know, you don't want to feel like that's the reason why someone's into you either. And I don't know, I personally like feel like I've never felt compelled to like send something like that to someone I'm just talking to because it feels like that's what I'm leading with now. When you're deciding what to do with it all, like I think you have to ask yourself all these questions like what am I trying to put out there because so often we put out differing from what we actually want and then if we're going to talk about like our gay and lesbian listeners out here I feel like maybe not lesbians as much but I feel like in gay culture like sending photos is kind of the norm that being said like if you are a gay man and don't want to do that like I don't feel like you need to feel pressured because that's so ingrained in the culture but I do recognize there are differences in this conversation based on sexuality and gender. We love to hear what you all think too. Our listeners, write in. We want to hear your opinions. We definitely heard them as anecdotes, but it would be really fascinating to just hear what your experiences have been. And so we're not, you know, just using our own experiences in this situation. But end of the day, and I will say this end of the day, but the ultimate learning is getting consent, getting buy-in, earning that trust, and having open conversations. You can't go wrong with those four things. No. No matter what it is you're doing. And to bring this full circle to answer the listener question, like, is it enough to end it? Mm. I think it is, you know, it's like one of those things like it seems superficial, but if you're really turned off and you can't get past it, then like, yeah, you need to honor yourself and like what that's going to look like. If you can have conversations and try to move past it, then that's ideal. But if you really can't, then like let that person find someone that's going to appreciate their sexy photo. And then you could also find someone that either you find their photos sexy or has the kind of EQ to know not to send you the photo until you're ready for it. I mean, that's the thing about photos, right? You can't unsee them. (laughs) No, you can't. And like, that's the thing. It like sounds stupid to like end something because of a photo. But if it really just changes your perception, then it changed your perception. Like once you get the ick factor, it's really hard to come back from that. Oh, yeah. Good luck. (laughs) Good luck with that. Good luck with that. Good luck indeed. And then like as you was saying, if you have differing opinions, if you've had relationships get off the ground or flourish because of sexy photos. And like we said, there's always a time and a place if the scene is set. So we'd like to hear that. So definitely feel free to write in. Tell us about it. If you have any additional questions, re-sexy photos. <laughs> we love it. We love building off of past brunch talks into new brunch talks. <laughs> so feel free to send those our way as well. You can reach us by emailing us at at hello at datablepodcast.com or you can DM us on Instagram at datablepodcast. We check all those messages, believe it or not. Okay, well, we'll see you next week. Bye. The Datable Podcast is part of the Frolic Podcast Network. Find more podcasts you'll love at frolic.media slash podcasts. Want to continue the conversation? First, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter with the handle at datablepodcast. Tag us in any post with the hashtag stay datable and trust us, we look at all of those posts. 
Then head over to our website, datablepodcast.com. There you'll find all the episodes as well as articles, videos, and our coaching service with vetted industry experts. You can also find our premium Y series where we dissect, analyze, and offer solutions to some of the most common dating conundrums. We're also downloadable for free on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Overcast, Stitcher Radio, and other podcast platforms. Your feedback is valuable to us, so don't forget to leave us a review. And most importantly, remember to stay dateable. 